What is going on everybody? Today's video is something I have done a video in the past, but a couple years ago now. We're in my trim room. Uh, please apologize the mess. It's a trim room. That's where all the dusty, dirty stuff happens. But this video, we're going to go over how to install our splitter tunnels. Now, if you're not familiar with what a splitter tunnel is, it's these guys right here. So, as you can see, uh, some people call them splitter diffusers, front diffusers, uh, splitter ramps. But all those phrases are referring to generally the same thing. So what we have right here, this splitter blade is for an S550 Mustang. Now, as you can see, we kind of have our rough marks already done. This is a kit that we make. So we know exactly where our tunnels are going. So we can do it by measurements. Now, if you were doing this on your own car, the steps we're going to do are almost the exact same weather. You know, obviously we have one of our carbon fiber splitters, plywood, um, some sheet of plastic, uh, alumilite, whatever your splitter is, basically measuring and cutting out is you know the same exact steps and in your situation you'll probably put the splitter like on not really on the car but like put a jack under it hold it up to the car and then you can slide the splitter tunnels in and kind of see where they fit and then kind of mark it out that way again since this is a kit we know exactly where these need to land so we could just do it off the car send this off the customer good to go here we have our straight tunnel and our large curve tunnel. Now we also have a small curve tunnel um, that depending on what car you have, it's much shorter. So it would be good for something like E46s that have like a very short nose or something, uh, E36s, uh, something, something like that. You can put it in front of the tire as long as it kind of is coming like out from the tire. You don't want to put a straight tire, or I'm sorry, you don't want to put a straight tunnel dumping right into a tire as long as you have some outwash you know it, it's better than nothing the other interesting thing about these is they are nested together so normally the tunnel will have a flange um around it uh the straight tunnel and the large curved tunnel we cut that flange off to just stick them right together and then you end up with this nice little strake right down the center but if you only have room for like one or the other you'll get the tunnel with a flange the whole way around it so enough kind of chatting about tunnels um as you can see we know where these go so we taped the outline what we're gonna have to do now i did it on one side Three quarter inch tape works out well, gives you just enough inset inside uh, to kind of do your trim line. So if we just three quarter inch tape inside of what is our exterior perimeter, the inside line of this tape is effectively our cut line. So there you go, we're now marked. We're pretty much just gonna cut on the inside of this line. Now for carbon fiber, we're gonna use what's called a permagrit blade. As you can see, uh, the blade almost has like a, um, like a grit on it. Um, so this is what you wanna use for carbon fiber. You can use a fine tooth metal blade, or you know, if, if your splitter is plywood or some other material, obviously just use the appropriate blade. Uh, no real rocket science here, so we're gonna get cutting. All right, so with our initial cut done, let's see how we did. So the tunnel installs from the underside. I'll get into exactly why in a minute. Um, but it should fit right there, right there, and we're looking pretty good. I actually, I don't think I need to touch up anything, so cool. So real world, uh, I'm gonna do both sides at the same time to save time, but video world, we're only gonna be doing this left-hand side. <laughs> so give me a minute and we'll get back to it. All right, so now that we're cut out and the splitter is now upside down, we can place our tunnels in and we know we're looking pretty good because when the splitter was the other way we kind of checked everything 
So at this point, all we need to do is bolt it in. Uh, we know we have enough flange. Oh, and now that we're upside down, I can kind of tell you why you always want to put your splitter tunnels on what will be the bottom of your splitter. Reason being, uh, it's sticking up a little right now because we're not bolted down. You will have a tiny bit of a lip on ours since they're carbon fiber. It's about 40, 50 thousandths of an inch um, uh, of carbon lip right here. So it's really not too bad. We have flow vised tunnels and it's not enough to like trip the air. It'll reattach right along this surface and work like normal. The one setup you do not want to do is put the splitter tunnels, I get what, what would effectively be on top of the splitter. Something, something sort of like that, which, you know, it looks okay along the side, but along the leading edge, you then have the thickness of your splitter, a hard edge right there. Uh, let me let me get some clamps so I can kind of explain this a little bit better. All right, so with the tunnel clamped in on what would effectively be the top of the splitter, remember we're upside down at the moment, you can see how hard and big this front edge is. Uh, so if you're using plywood, aluminite, whatever, a splitter probably has some sort of substantial thickness, much greater than just the thickness of the carbon of the tunnels. So when the air wants to flow along here, and it comes off this edge, you just get turbulence down the whole tunnel, no attachment. You're destroying the performance of the tunnel if you mount them like this. Even if you were to put like a healthy chamfer on this, this front edge, you're not gonna chamfer it enough to smoothly flow into this tunnel. So again, just put the tunnel flange on what would be the bottom and it's a much better solution, easier solution as well as far as mounting these. So at this point, we're ready to start drilling and install our hardware. All right, so we are bolted in and the very last thing we're gonna do is put a few rivets along this leading edge. You can see how we got a tiny bit of a bow, nothing bad at all, um, but they'll just kind of help keep this leading edge down and have a much smaller bolt head than these. Now, one trick we kind of like to do is whenever we nest them together, we will put a washer on this one because one bolt will then kind of hold both of them. Um, but again, if you're doing like one tunnel, you know, about three, four bolts per side should be good. Now the rivets we're going to use are called exploding rivets. And if you're not sure what they are, I'm going to waste one here for you. And instead of like a normal rivet, you'll see that it kind of splits out. Oops. So there you go. You can kind of see how... The way it splits, you get much better holding power. And a rivet like this is much better to use in a carbon fiber with a foam core, which brings me to another point real quick. So here's the off cut of our splitter on both sides. So you can see we got the carbon top, carbon bottom, and this is what's called a closed cell foam. So it's a dense structural foam, but the cells are closed, so it won't ever absorb water. So that's why we can get away with just cutting them in like this. If you had uh, like a like a Nomex honeycomb or something, you'd want to be a little extra careful doing it this way. You might have to like seal the edges where you cut or something. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other materials um, you'd want to be worried about. Wood, you might want to like seal any cut edges. But yeah, the way we do our carbon splitters, you can cut into them and you'll be fine. All right, so there you go. Rivets in the front, you know, kind of holding it down. Pretty flush and smooth. All right, guys, so here it is, all finished up. We're obviously looking at what is the bottom of the splitter at the moment. Um, so you can see it all done. And if we bring it down, one of the benefits to using hardware, I did this on my own car, these bolts, can be double utilized to run brackets up to the car in some way, however you need. And then obviously the bumper cover kind of hides all this. Um, depending on 
your setup, you will need an air dam that goes from the splitter to fill the gap to, you know, the bumper cover or whatever. <clears throat> on our 15 to 17 Mustangs, we have that. Uh, we don't have it for other options or, you know, again, installing these on your own car to kind of do your own thing. Another benefit doing it this way, um, you know, you can start with a flat splitter and obviously like add them as you go. Um, or if there's some sort of class rules where you're only allowed some amount of like square inch based on the size of the tunnel's footprint or something, um, you know, you can kind of pick and choose as you need uh, as well. So, you know, another advantage doing it this way. So there you have it. Uh, really not a lot to installing our splitter tunnels. Again, we got three sizes available at the recording of this video. If you're watching it in the future, we might um, have a couple other sizes available. A few comments on questions I think people may have. Um, yes, you can do a splitter with tunnels all integrated as one. A lot more work. It gets rid of your ability to kind of do it incrementally or add tunnels to something, you know. A mold would need to be made and molds are extremely time consuming to do. So hence very expensive to do one that way. Um, and you're kind of fixed. If you make a mold that has tunnels at some specific spacing, it's like, that's, that's it. That's all you got, you know? So some downsides to doing it that way for sure. Uh, but some upsides as well. Um, but yeah, this just allows you to add tunnels, make a lot more front down force relatively easily. And they're kind of universal. You can put them on just about any splitter. Um, I think that's about it. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, again, links to our splitter tunnels. Um, if you're interested in any splitters, links to everything will be down below. As always, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.